In this video, you're going to learn how to solve linear equations involving one variable, and we're going to talk about one-step equations, two-step equations, multi-step equations, as well as variables on the left side and the right side of the equation. Now, when you're solving linear equations, it's helpful to think of these three easy steps, and I'll talk about it as we work through these problems. But the first step is you want to simplify the left and right sides of the equation first, as much as you can. Then you want to get the variables and the numbers on opposite sides of that equal sign. And the last step is you always want to solve for just one of the variable. So go ahead and pause the video if you want to try some of these on your own. We'll go through them together. The first one, we have x minus 3 equals 10. Now what some students like to do, uh, you know when I'm tutoring students, sometimes they'll mention things that their teachers say to me such as, you know, uh, their teacher referenced this as the great wall of math, meaning you know, you've got the left side of this equation okay, on this side of the line and the right side of the equation. So you can kind of think of that as the two sides. But what you want to do is you want to see first, can you simplify this left side at all? Well, we can't. We really can't con uh, combine a number and a variable together. Over here we just have a number. So all we can really do here at this point is uh, go to step number two. We want to say, are the variables and the numbers on opposite sides? Well, you can see the variables here on the left, but we still have this number here, and we have a number here. So we want to get these numbers together on one side. So what I'm going to do to get rid of the three here is do the opposite operation. So remember, subtraction and addition are opposites, multiplication and division are opposites, etc. So instead of subtracting three, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add three Whatever you do to the left, you want to do to the right just to keep it balanced, okay? So now, I like to draw a line. I like to keep everything lined up. Uh, 10 plus 3 is 13. Negative 3 plus 3, that cancels. That's just 0. And you can see we get x equals 13. Now, if you want to check your work, the nice thing about algebra is you can take that number, put it back into the original equation. So I could say 13 minus 3, yes, that's 10. Now these ones are kind of simple. You could probably guess the answer just by looking at it. But as we get into the two-step and the multi-step and the variables on both sides, it gets a little bit more challenging. So let's go through the steps for number two now. For y divided by 5 equals negative 4, what would you do for this one? Well, if you're following the steps, first you would simplify the right side and the left side. But there's really nothing that we can simplify. Then we want to get the variables and numbers on opposite sides. Well, you can see, to get this y by itself, uh, we're going to have to get rid of this 5 here. And the opposite of dividing by 5 is to multiply by 5. So I'm going to multiply the left side by 5. I'm going to multiply the right side by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 1 times anything is itself. So you can see we're getting just y by itself. And we get negative 20. So that was kind of a simple one. Let's go to number 3. This one, we've got 11 plus a equals negative 8. We want to get, of course, the variable by itself. We have to get rid of this 11 to get that variable by itself. So I'm going to do the opposite of positive 11. See how this is a positive 11, which is kind of like adding 11? We want to do the opposite. We want to subtract 11. Whatever we do to the left, we want to do to the right to keep it balanced. Now you can see these cancel out, and we get a equals uh, negative 8 minus 11, which is negative 19. Now, if you want to check your work, you just go ahead and put it back in. 11 plus negative 19 equals negative 8, and you can verify you got it right. Number 4, we've got negative 56 equals negative 8c. Well, here what we can do is we want to get the c by itself. So instead of multiplying by negative 8, let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 8. You can see these cancel, and we have c by itself. Negative 56 divided by negative 8 is positive 7 because the two negatives uh, it will give you a positive, and that's your final answer. Now, it doesn't matter whether the variable ends up on the right or the left, but the main thing is you want to solve for just one of that variable, and you got it. Okay, now two-step equations. Let's look at uh, three examples here. We're going to follow these steps again. Simplify the left and right sides. So for number five, if I look at this left side of this equation, I really can't combine the e and this number 2 because they're unlike terms. One's a variable, one's a number. So then we go to step number 2. We want to get the variables on one side, numbers on the opposite side. So here, I've got 16 on the right. I've got this negative 2 here on the left. I want to move this to the other side. And the way you do that is by doing the opposite. Instead of subtracting 2, let's add 2. Of course, whatever we do to the left, we want to do to the right to keep it balanced, right? So this comes out to 18. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. I don't usually write the 0. And then we've got 6c. We're just bringing that down. 
Okay, now we are on to step number three. We wanna solve for one of the variable. We've got six E here. We just wanna solve for one E. Because these are next to each other, that means they're multiplied together. So what's the opposite of multiplying by six? Dividing by six. Whatever you do to the left, you wanna to do to the right. These cancel, or you can think of six divided by six as one E, or you could just write E equals 18 divided by six, which is three. Again, if you're not sure if you're doing it right, you can always take that number, put it back into the original problem. 3 times 6 is 18, minus 2. Yes, that's 16, so we know we got it right. See if you can do number 6 now. We've got negative 15 equals d divided by 3 minus 12. So let's follow the steps. Step number 1, we would try to simplify the right side. Okay, but we really can't combine this because we have a variable and a number. And we try to simplify what's over here on the left side. This is just a number. There's really nothing to simplify. These come into play a little bit more, some of these steps, as we get into the multi-step equations. Number two, though, we want to get the variables on one side, the numbers on the opposite side. Now, students often say to me, Mario, how do you know what side to get everything on? And there's really no right answer. You just want to make sure that you're separating them. You're getting variables on one side, numbers on the other. I try to make it easy on myself, though, in the sense that see how the variable is already here on the right, but there's no variables here on the left, right? So the variables are already here on the right. Let's just leave them on the right and get the numbers on the left, okay? This way they'll be on opposite sides. So you try to make it simple, but you can't really make a mistake as long as you do the same thing to both sides. So instead of subtracting 12, let's add 12 to both sides. You can see these cancel, that's zero. You don't have to write zero. Bring the D uh, divided by three down, and negative 15 plus 12 is negative three. Now we're just trying to solve for one of the variables. We just want D by itself. So what's the opposite of dividing by three? multiplying by three, you can see those cancel. And if we do that to the right, we want to multiply the left by three, so that comes out to negative nine, and you've got it. Okay, let's move on to number seven. See if you can do this one. Here, we've got the variables on the left, okay, and we've got numbers over here on the left and the right. So we really want to get the variables uh, on one side and the numbers on the other side. So let's see if we can move this negative four to the other side. Now you can't just move it, all right? You have to kind of get rid of it. And the way you get rid of something is by doing the opposite. So I'm going to add four to the left. I'm going to add four to the right. These are opposites. They cancel. And 26 plus four is 30. Now we're down to that last step, solving for just one of the variable. Instead of multiplying by negative five, we do the opposite. We divide by negative 5. Those cancel, because anything divided by itself is 1. And we get y equals negative 6, and you've got it. Okay, now let's talk about how to handle when you have variables on both sides of the equation. What do we do in that case? Well, again, we always go back to these three easy steps. We say, can we simplify what's here on the right side? Can we simplify what's here on the left side? Well, we really can't combine variables and numbers together. They're unlike terms. Same thing here, we can't combine variables and numbers that are unlike terms. We have to make a decision though, and it doesn't make uh, too much uh, of a difference whether you get the variables on the left or the right. You just wanna make sure that the variables and the numbers are on opposite sides. So let's just go ahead and make a decision here. How about I get the variables on the right? Okay, so if I want the variables, okay, the letter here, X on the right, that means that I have to get rid of it on the left. How do you get rid of something? You do the opposite. Now, when you look at this 3x, is it positive or negative? Well, if you look to the left, there's nothing there. So you can think of that as a plus sign or a positive sign. That's plus 3x. We want to do the opposite. We want to subtract 3x. Of course, remember, whatever you do to the left, you want to do to the right to keep it balanced. So this comes out to 2x plus 9 equals negative 7. Now, you can see we made a decision. We were gonna get the variables on the right. So that means we wanna get the numbers on the left. So how do I get the numbers on the left? I have to get rid of them on the right. How do you get rid of something? You do the opposite. So that these cancel out. We just get 2x equals negative 16. Now, we're down to the last step. We wanna solve for one of the variable. Instead of 2x, we just want 1x. What's the opposite of multiplying by two? dividing by uh, both sides by 2, and then you can see we've got a negative 16 divided by 2, which is negative 8, equals x, and you got it. If you want to check your work, you can take negative 8, put it into x here, put it into x here, make sure that the left side and the right side are equal. Let's go down to number 9. See if you can do this one on your own. Negative 7y plus 4 equals y minus 20. For this one, I'm going to get the variables on the left. So if I want to get the variables on the left, 
I have to get rid of them on the right. How do I get rid of something? I do the opposite. So this is a positive y here. So that's like plus y, I'm gonna subtract y. You wanna make sure you do it to both sides to keep it balanced. Bring down the four, and then we've got these cancel and we get negative 20. So we made a decision to get the variables on the left, so that means we're gonna get the numbers on the opposite side on the right. So in order to get the numbers on the right, I have to get rid of them on the left by doing the opposite. Instead of adding four, let's subtract four. And now this comes out to negative 24 equals negative eight y. The last step is just to solve for one of the variable. Instead of multiplying by negative eight, let's divide both sides by negative eight. And you can see that those are gonna cancel and we get y equals positive three, and you got it. Okay, let's try one more of these variables on both sides before we get to the multi-step equations. Here, what do you think we should do? Should we get the variables on the left or we should get them on the right? Now, some students, you know, they'll say, Mario, you know, I don't like negative numbers so much. So let me see if maybe I can get the variables on the right. This way, I'll have a positive uh, variable instead of like having a negative amount of the variable. So you can do that if that's more comfortable for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add 6a to both sides. Those cancel. And 2a plus 6a is 8a. Okay, see how that's positive? But because we got the variable on the right, we wanna get the numbers on the left. Now, whenever you move something from one side to the other, the sign changes to the opposite. Like, see this positive 21? If I move it over here, it's gonna be like subtracting 21. It's gonna be like a negative 21. Or if I took this negative 11 and I moved over here, it would be like plus 11. So you just wanna make sure you don't just move the number. You have to realize that it's gonna be the opposite because to get rid of 21, instead of adding 21, we're subtracting 21, see? And then this comes out to negative 32 equals 8a. We just wanna solve for 1a, so instead of multiplying by eight, let's divide both sides by eight, and that comes out to negative four. And again, you can check it by putting it back in to make sure the left side and the right sides match. Okay, now let's tackle some multi-step equations. So here's where the three easy steps will really come in handy. Let's start with step number one. We want to simplify the left side of the equation, okay, to the left of the equal sign. We wanna to try to simplify the right side of the equal sign as much as you can. So here, you can see what I have is two times the quantity x minus three. I'm gonna distribute that two into the parentheses. That's gonna give us two x minus six, okay, because I'm multiplying both by two, minus four, equals 5x plus 8. Okay, now I can also combine negative 6 and negative 4 to negative 10. So now I've combined the left side as much as I can or simplified the right side as much as I can. Now we're on to step number two. We wanna get the variables and the numbers on opposite sides. So here what I'm gonna do, I generally like to get the variables on the left and the numbers on the right. I always just do it the same way each time. So if I wanna get the variables on the left, that means I have to get rid of them on the right. So I'm gonna do the opposite, I'm gonna subtract 5x. These are gonna cancel out. This gives us eight. 2x minus 5x is negative 3x. We just bring that negative 10 down. It's like you're adding these two lines together. So now we've got the variables on the left. We wanna get the numbers on the right. Instead of subtracting 10, let's add 10. That way we get rid of the numbers on the left and we have negative three X equals 18. The last step now is to solve for one of the variable. Instead of multiplying by negative three, let's divide by negative three and that gives us X equals negative six and you've got it. Now again, if you wanna check, you put it back in, make sure the left side and the right sides match. If you're enjoying the way that I teach and you want more um, help learning algebra one or algebra two or you know any other type of uh, math, I'll put a link in the description to some of my video courses for sale. You can check those out, uh, see if it's a good fit for you. Otherwise, let's do this last multi-step problem here and uh, see if you can do this one on your own. What we're gonna do here is follow the three steps. We're gonna simplify the left side as much as we can and the right side as much as we can. So here we've got a little bit of work ahead of us. We've got negative four Y and positive three Y. That combines to negative one Y or you could just say negative Y. We've got the positive five and the negative seven, which adds up to negative two. And then here we can distribute the two into the parentheses, that's two y minus two minus nine. We can combine the negative two and the negative nine to negative 11. And let's bring down negative y minus two. Okay, so now we simplify the left side as much as we can, the right side as much as we can. We wanna get the variables on one side, numbers on the other. Like I said in the last problem, I generally just like to get the variables on the left. 
and the numbers on the right. So to get the variables on the left, I have to get rid of them on the right. What's the opposite of adding 2y? See, this is like plus 2y. We want to do the opposite, subtract so 2y. Okay, so that gives us negative 3y minus 2. These cancel, equals negative 11. I got the variables on the left. I want to get the numbers on the right, which means I have to get rid of them on the left. So we want to do the opposite. We're going to add 2. Now we're down to negative 3y, negative 3y equals negative 9. Instead of multiplying by negative 3, we're going to divide both sides by negative 3. And you can see that comes out to y equals positive 3, and you got it. If you want to see more multi-step equations, follow me over to that video right there, and we'll dive into some more problems.